Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by Hey viewers, Dave here for Snappy Turtle Comics and Gallery. Snappy Turtle Gallery is your go-to destination for geeky, nerdy prints, and each is just $5. With over 600 prints and growing, you're sure to find something you'll love. Go to SnappyTurtleGallery.com today and get yours. I'm Lynn from Metalhead Minis. Great to meet you. Uh, be sure to check us out online at MetalheadMinis.com. You can find out more about our services, such as miniature painting. We also do consignment. We also teach at local game stores. Be sure to check us out at MetalheadMinis.com. Thanks for having me. by viewers like you. Greetings Gamers on Games viewers, this is Dave and we are doing a reaction and review of an article written by Nicholas at WistedT.net so this article is called, The Bag of Holding is a Bad Magic Item for D&D. So I'm going to let you guys listen to the audio version of this article, and I will see you guys on the back end for my thoughts and comments. Please excuse the provocative title, but I would like to talk a little about why I think the Bag of Holding is an item that's better left out of your Dungeons & Dragons campaign. What is a Bag of Holding? The Bag of Holding is a magic item that exists in most, all, editions of Dungeons and Dragons, as well as most clones, like Pathfinder and OSR games. It is basically an enchanted bag with an interior considerably larger than its outer dimensions. It is used to store treasure and equipment that would otherwise be too cumbersome for the player characters to carry. Below is how the bag of holding is described in D&D &D Basic, Expert from 1981. Note that in those older editions weight was defined in coins. 10 coins were equal to 1 pound, so this bag of holding can fit items with a combined weight of 1,000 pounds. Source, Old School Essential System Reference Document. Bag of Holding A normal looking, small sack that can magically contain large objects and weights. Size, objects of up to 10 feet by 5 feet by 3 feet can fit inside the bag. Weight, up to 10,000 coins of weight can be placed in the bag. When full, the bag weighs 600 coins. The modern version of the Bag of Holding, D&D &D 5th edition, is more or less identical to the basic or expert one, but carries only 500 pounds of weight. What purpose does the Bag of Holding serve? In short, the Bag of Holding lets player characters carry much more items than they would normally be able to. This is of course extremely useful for a bunch of semi-medieval adventurers in a fantasy world. Players are happy because their characters can bring more equipment and salvage more treasure. The dungeon master is happy because he doesn't need to bother with rules for tracking encumbrance. Why the bag is bad? So, why is this a bad thing? Well, it's not bad per se. If you want to run a superhero style Dungeons and Dragons campaign, where characters are larger than life then it's fine to not track mundane mechanics such as encumbrance. But then again, why not just ignore it completely? You don't need the bag of holding as an excuse to remove encumbrance from your game. Just assume the character somehow manages to carry everything they want. But to me Dungeons and Dragons isn't a game of superheroes and epic encounters. To me D&D &D is a game about heroic burglary and expedition style adventures. I would argue that most older editions of the game support my approach. Others would argue that later editions are built for something very different. Both viewpoints would probably be correct. If you want to play D&D &D the way I prefer, then mundane choices become important. The bag of holding removes those choices from the game. It makes them irrelevant. And that is why it's bad. Expedition Style Dungeons and Dragons Expedition Style Burglary Adventures are all about prioritizing. 
when encumbrance is a factor the party need to somehow decide what to bring on their journey. How many torches do we really need? How much water and food can we carry? What if we run out? Do we need to bring any special equipment or tools based on what we know of the site? Can we make do with one tent, or do we need two? Do we bring things just in case or only what we know we'll have use for? Do we need to get a donkey? A cart? What do we do with it when we enter the dungeon? Hello Bill. By having to make all these choices the game becomes richer. Already in town the players need to start planning their venture. They benefit greatly by gathering information about the adventure location as such information can help them prioritize. Without a bag of holding these are hard choices. With a bag of holding they can just buy up the whole inventory of the store and they're all set. There are no choices to make except for possibly financial ones. A Game of Burglary D&D is a game of burglary. It's about reaching hard to reach places, and enter dangerous sites to find treasure and get out alive. This presents important choices. Treasure weighs, often a lot. If the players have a bag of holding they can just grab whatever they find and stuff it. If they don't, well that's another story. The 200 pound statue looks valuable, but is it worth the effort? Salvaging a chest full of coins is a feat of its own. Even if you manage to get it out of the dungeon you might not be able to bring it back to town without assistance. Perhaps better bury it somewhere where X marks the spot. Being encumbered is risky especially in old-school dungeons and dragons where combat is dangerous. An encumbered character is putting his or her life at risk should a hasty retreat become necessary. When danger lurks around the corner you want to make sure you're able to run. Having to leave treasure behind is an excruciating decision to make, but an important lesson can be learned here, next time make sure to bring hirelings on your expedition. All these decisions makes the game richer in my opinion. What the bag of holding does is to remove such dilemma, and that's why I think it's bad. Alright, so that's a lot to take in, and I think what this really all boils down to, as he even said, is this revolves around play style. For me, I prefer a higher magic type campaign setting. Forgotten Realms and Dragonlance tend to be pretty much in there, though Dragonlance does have the no healing situation going on. To me, settings like that would be more in favor of items like the Bag of Holding, where it isn't such a big deal. In addition, there's always ways to lessen the impact of items like a Bag of Holding. In fact, you could even make a custom item and make a lesser Bag of Holding. This would be in addition to the already three different versions of the Bag of Holding, as well as the Haversack and other storage items that are available throughout the Dungeons & Dragons magic item list. I've always felt that the Bag of Holding magic item is very useful for players and characters who are just starting out, as it's a way to help them level up quickly and get to all the meat and potatoes that awaits them at higher levels, should they survive. And don't forget, if you're finding that the Bag of Holding is becoming too big of an issue, you could always place items like the Bag of Devouring throughout the game to help hamstring them and slow them down. Considering the Bag of Holding and the Bag of Devouring both revolve around pocket dimension concepts, you could have a Devourer enter into his Bag of Holding and devour the contents therein. Remember, it's all magic. Anything's possible. It's like the old adage goes, the Dungeon Master giveth, and the Dungeon Master taketh away. So keep in mind the level of magic pervasiveness in your campaign and your campaign setting, and see whether or not it would be a good fit for you. This is Dave discussing the Bag of Holding, and I'll see you guys next time. Dave out.